Give this a go, hands up, who can tell me sign 30? By the way, it starts easy, it gets harder. I'm in. Half. Half, very good, thank you. This is the one where you should be like, right away, I know this one, okay? But, just as a side note, whenever a, a teacher has a bunch of questions for you, and they're like, oh, volunteers, volunteers, always go early, go early, because it gets, it always gets progressively harder. You might as well get it out of the way. Sign 60, a bit trickier. Yeah, cut a cap. 0.866. Okay, you can do it as a decimal, 0 0.866. But you remember, these guys are special because we can get exact values. We don't need to resort to decimals. We can have some square roots and thirds, okay? So 0 0.866, what third is it equal to? Yeah, David. Root 3 on 2. Root 3 on 2, fantastic. Okay, now, sign 240, don't shout it out yet, but who's got sign 240? Hands up. Okay, a decent number of you. Okay, so, Kyla, what did you get for it? Negative root 3 on 2, which is exactly right. Now, you should be a little suspicious. Um, for those of you who were like, where did that come from, okay? I've, I've paired up some of these solutions so that they help you get, they help you, one will help you calculate another, right? And um, exercises and exams will often do this. So you see these two, right? 60 and 240 are connected to each other. Let me help you remember how. I'll put this over here on the right, good morning. If you remember back to the unit circle, right? And uh, if, you, if you were the, in the group where you kind of looked at this and you thought, I don't know what to do at all, okay, maybe you want to just quickly jot one of these down with me. Doesn't have to be beautiful. We're not gonna put a whole amount on it, just enough to answer this question, that's all. 60 and 240, they're closely related. Okay, 60 degrees is exactly how much less than 240? What's the difference? It's 180 degrees, right? So 180 degrees is, like, is a straight line. So these are important angles, right? If I go to my unit circle, where is 60 degrees? Where do I start measuring from? Which side? I've got um, one, two, three, four places I could start measuring from. Which one of them do I take? I take, I take the fourth one I named, didn't I? This one over here, and you would call it, we named this right at the beginning, um, because it's the x-axis, but it's the one on the plus side, we call it the, um, the positive x-axis. Okay, so that's where I begin. 60 degrees, if I begin here, is gonna go something like that. That looks like about 60 degrees to me, okay? And so, remembering that your x and y coordinates are cos and sine. That's how we redefine the tree functions, right? x will be cos 60, which I don't really want, but the y will be sine 60, which is root 3 on 2, okay? And you can see, by the way, as Kanaka kind of mentioned to us, 0 0.866, 0 0.866, 1's right up there, right? Yeah, 0 0.866 is pretty high. It's pretty close to 1, okay? Now, I'm going to use this as my stepping stone to the next one, right? 240 degrees, we just told me, you just told me that it's 180 degrees different from 60, right? 180 degrees is different. So that means I get this straight line going all the way over there, right? Sorry, that's a bit wonky. Let me draw it more accurately. Okay. There's the first 60 that I put on there, and then I add 180. So now all the way around, <coughs> agree. That's my 240 degrees, okay? And I'm still asking about sine, so I'm still interested in the y coordinate, right? So I've got this coordinate being cos 240, sine 240. Okay, now again, the circle, what's special about it is that it's symmetrical. It's symmetrical everywhere, right? So can you see, you can even look at it if you draw it reasonably accurately, right? This y coordinate up here, which we have is root 3 on 2, is going to be exactly the same but upside down. It's okay, it's not the first time. Uh, but upside down, for, for this guy down here, right? You see that? Right? Down. If that's root 3 on 2 up the top, then I'm going to get negative root 3 on 2 down the bottom. Okay? One more trick. Remember, um, if you haven't already, grab your calculator out because when you pop in sine 60, right? I showed you this trick before. It's a bit of a hack, but sometimes when you're in a pinch, a hack is better than nothing, right? When you put in sine 60, and it provides you that decimal, right? So 0.866. If you go ahead and you put in sine 240, it'll give you the same decimal, but with a minus sign at the front, which isn't surprising, is it? Once you know the answer, okay? So you can use that to your advantage. Of course, you can do one more thing. You can square it. And what would you expect to get before you press equals? When you square this guy, 
the top will become three and the bottom will become four. So you're expecting three quarters, right? Which sure enough, 0 0.75, okay? So that was just revision. Right, cos 45. Who can give me cos 45? Somebody hasn't said anything yet. You don't got that answer. Yeah, back. One over two. Ooh, very close. One over. Root two. It's root two, isn't it? It's so very close, right? And the way you can uh, confirm for yourself, because that's a bit tricky, is number one, chuck it in your calculator, right? That'll give you a shot. Um, or you can draw that triangle. This guy, one, one, and Pythagoras will tell you what the hypotenuse is. It's root two. Okay? So, very close. But always remember, um, you've got plenty of things to help you check. Now, again, just like with two and three, I have paired up four and five. Okay? So, cos 315, you can see there's a relationship here between 45 and 315. Right? Let me chuck it on a, um, another unit circle. Are you getting the sense yet? Unit circles are really useful. Okay? Um, where would 45 degrees be? Again, it would be... Um, up here in this first quadrant. So there's, there's 45. 315, 315 goes all the way around to here. Do you see that? Right. Um, I'm 45 degrees short of coming back to the start because coming back to the start is 360. Right. So going all the way around, that's 315. Okay, now you already told me what cos 45 is, right? That's up here, cos 45, and the x coordinate will be, sorry, the y coordinate will be sine 45. So that guy's one on root two, yeah? Where's 315? He's directly below, right? So he should share the same x coordinate, right? This cos <coughs> 315, sine 315, these guys should be identical. Any points? on the Cartesian plane that are directly above one another or below one another, they should share the same x value, right? And sure enough, if you chuck it into your calculator, you get, what, 0.7-ish for this? And you should get the same number for 315, right? So, one over two. Are you happy with that? Does that make sense? All right, who's got some answers for six or seven for those quadratics? Someone hasn't said anything yet? Someone hasn't given it? Aaron. Why is, I mean, uh, the first value for x is yep. 1, yep. and then the second value is minus 4. Okay, who has the same answer? Yes? Okay, now how do we get there? Being that that's correct, how do you actually, like, do I just pop numbers in and see what happens? What, what technique should I use? I should factorize, shouldn't I? Okay, so let's just quickly factorize this guy together. I'm searching for a pair of numbers. What do the pair of numbers do? What's special about them? They should... They should multiply to give me negative 4, and they should add to give me 3. Oh, we did that. Okay, so therefore, when I do this, the two numbers <laughs> add to 3, multiply to negative 4, the pair of numbers is going to be x minus 1, x plus 4. Does it work? Yeah. Does it work? It does, right? You can quickly go back and test. You're like 4 plus negative 1, bam. 4 times negative 1, bam. It works, okay? And straight out of there, you can get your solutions, right? Okay. Moving on to seven, you can do the same kind of thing, right? Do you want me to go back? Do you want me to go back? Sorry, we got. Yeah, yeah. We got positive four and minus one. Okay, you mean for the final answer? Yeah. Did you get this? Yeah. Okay, all right. That's a great question to ask. Let's let's because I'm going to use it again, so I might as well clarify it now. How did I get from here up to here? Why is it that when I have x minus one, the answer is not minus one? Okay, let me try and explain. If I tell you, if I tell you, I've got a, um, let's do it over here. I have a pair of numbers, A and B, okay? And if I multiply them together, then I get zero. Okay? Now, immediately, without knowing anything else about this pair of numbers, right? You know at least one of them, maybe both of them, if you'd be boring, okay? At least one of these numbers has to be zero, right? Because if you take any other numbers, like, 1 and 100, or 5 and negative 3, or 50 billion and a half, right? It doesn't matter what numbers you combine. If one of them isn't 0, then your product can't possibly be 0. So one of them's got to be 0. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's just suppose, let's suppose it's the first one. Okay. Now, over here, I know it doesn't look like it, but this is exactly the same situation, right? I have a pair of numbers. One of them is x minus 1. 
and the other one is x plus 4. And apparently if I multiply them, just like over there, I'm going to get 0. Okay? So I know that one of them, or both of them, have to be 0. So let's take this one at a time. Let's try this guy. Right? Suppose that number on the left hand side, a, right? suppose he is 0. So x minus 1 equals 0. This is what I'm testing out. Okay, now I know there's only one way that I can put a value in for x that will make this work, right? Uh, if you think back to equations, what will I do to both sides of the equation to solve this thing? I'm going to add 1, or plus 1 to both sides, right? Which gives me x equals positive 1, not negative 1. It's kind of the reverse, isn't it? Right? And I can do exactly the same thing over here. Suppose I was wrong, maybe it's not this guy, 0, maybe it's this guy, okay? So I'll say x plus 4. Let's try that guy being 0. Well, think in equations. What will I do to both sides to make x the subject? And the answer is I'll take away 4. Right? You take away 4 from this side, just leaves you with x. You take away 4 from this side, gives you negative 4 rather than positive 4. Okay? Another way of seeing it is that it, suppose I did say, uh, you know, I missed this. I was trying to do this all in my head. And I wrote down x equals negative 1 or 4. Okay. I can try both of those values. I can pop them back in here, or I can pop them in here, and something will break. Right? I'm going to get, let's see, let's try negative 1. Uh, negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6. It's not 0. It doesn't satisfy the original equation. Okay? So there are two ways now that I know. This way here that I've written in green, or just by testing out what I get to see, hmm, have I got it right or not? It's one of the really important things in math, not just to be able to get an answer, but be able to convince yourself and others it's the right one. Is that a little clearer? Yeah. All right, excellent. Um, being that I spent a bit of time on that, let's just do this one really quickly. What should I do to both sides to make this a bit neater? I'll take away six from both sides. I am running out of space over here. That gives me this. And again, we're going to search for that pair of numbers, right? What's the pair of numbers? Five. It's going to be, it's almost five and two, isn't it? When I add 5 and 2, I don't get 3, I get 7. So one of these numbers has to be negative, right? One of them, 5, I guess it'll be negative 2. 5 minus 2, that'll give me 3. And 5 times negative 2, that'll give me negative 10. Right? So this will be my factorization. You okay with that? Let me get some more space underneath here. Just like I went from this factorization to the solutions, right? I'm going to do the same thing for this pair here, which will give me x equals, what are my two solutions? Minus 5. Yeah, negative 5 or 2. Bam, I'm done. Okay, and of course you can go back and you can check it out. Pop it in here. You can pop it right back to the side if you like. Uh, let's see here. Okay, let's try negative 5, shall we? Negative 5 squared. When you square it, what happens to the negative? It cancels itself out, so you have 25 plus... This is going to become negative 15. So that becomes 25 minus 15, that's 10. You take away 4. 10 take away 4 is 6. Nailed it. It's fine. Okay, and you can go ahead and do the same thing for 2.